The objective of this video is to illustrate how a background and a combination of two synthetic peaks can be used to approximate these data. The basic components of a peak model are a background, which is defined on the regions property page, and synthetic components that are defined on the components property page, both on the quantification parameters dialog window. The background is added and represents the curve above which signal is considered to be significant to XPS. So once we've established the background, the next thing is to approximate the signal by using synthetic components. The objective for pulse counted data is to produce a residual standard deviation that is close to unity. So to achieve this, we need to adjust the background and also line shapes so that we obtain a good approximation to the signal itself so that when we perform optimization the residual can fit the data as accurately as possible. So in the first instance what we'll do is adjust the line shapes and develop a line shape that will be suitable for these data by starting initially with Lorentzian line shapes. The method by which we'll fit these data is to develop line shapes that fit first of all at the peak maximum and then we'll progressively work out how to adjust the line shape so that we obtain a fit in these wings of the peaks as well as at the peak maximum. So we've started here with a Lorentzian line shape, it's an LA 1,0 this means that there's no Gaussian contribution, it's purely Lorentzian and when I say fit, we obtain a fit that we can then progressively improve on by making adjustments to these line shapes. So looking at the wings here we can see that there's slightly more signal to the lower binding energy side of these peaks. So what we'll do is we'll introduce an asymmetry by using 1 comma 1.05 in the first instance the objective will be to produce a peak where the deviation from the data itself looks symmetrical by I, that is, for both of these peaks. I'm going to increase this second parameter from 1.05 to introduce a greater degree of damping in the tail. So the idea, as I said, is to look and see symmetry within the, the line shapes with respect to the data, which can be then corrected for by introducing some form of Gaussian convolution and with each time I say fit and I get a different relationship between these limits here and the peak maximum so I've improved the residual and I'm going to carry on increasing the Gaussian contribution and saying fit and until you can see that the residual is now getting close to unity. In fact we would like it to be slightly better than unity because these data were collected using a multiple detector system so the act of summing multiple detectors tends to produce uh, a residual standard deviation that's less than one. So let us see what else we can do here. We've got a little bit more Gaussian contribution and fit so we've now got a line shape that is approximating both of these curves reasonably well. Perhaps we'll add a bit more in, this, in the LA suppression of the right hand side in each of these peaks and say fit. And so now we're starting to get a residual that is less than one. And so these are probably a reasonable approximation to these peaks at this point. So the question is, why does the LA line shape work so well for these data? And the reason it works is because we have an instrument that collected these data that has a multiple detector system. And that's the first point. The second point is that these data were collected using a 27 micron aperture, which means that the signal going into the entrance slot in the analyzer is very well defined so we have a relatively small area of signal entering the analyzer 
and we have the ability to see at a very fine level the signal as it arrives at the detector which is split between in this case I'm indicating 140 but some instruments have 128 there, there are logical detector channels that divide up the detector and effectively provide a small aperture into the detector that then transfers signal into the data system. The function of the LA line shape is to model how signal arriving at the detector is ultimately transferred through to the data system and the mathematical way of modeling such a transfer of information is using a convolution integral and we use in this case for the LA line shape a Lorentzian like line shape convoluted with a Gaussian so the parameters of the LA line shape are influencing how this convolution integral is calculated and hence the shape that we are trying to model within the data system given a, an input signal. The shape arriving at the detector is also determined by the size of this aperture at the entrance slit and we can see this if we consider what happens when we reduce the width of the aperture. So these represent two different scenarios. We have a, a wider entrance aperture and a narrower entrance aperture and a consequence of having a narrower entrance aperture is that the image of this aperture then arrives at the detector and you see a greater differentiation between different detector channels and therefore energy resolution compared to a system where you have a wider aperture where there's the potential for overlapping information that represents energy information and spatial information. So as a consequence of using a 27 micron aperture we've sacrificed signal in order to produce line shapes that are closer to what we would expect from these indium 3D peaks. So in terms of the LA line shape, the LA line shape includes two parameters the alpha and beta parameters and these represent the first and the second parameters in the definition and by using a value of one for the first parameter means that on the left hand side of the peak maximum we're representing the data using a pure Lorentzian line shape on the right hand side of the peak maximum we've got a value that's different and is greater than unity so we're suppressing information here using this beta parameter and we end up with an asymmetric line shape and the reason that's asymmetric could be multifactorial and one of the potential reasons is instrumental but whatever the reason is we have to do something to produce a meaningful line shape for the given data that isn't purely Lorentzian hence these adjustments prior to introducing a Gaussian width which convolutes the line shape that we see uh, before the detector and at least that's the theory. So when we construct a line shape using this LA line shape there's a combination of a, an almost Lorentzian line shape with a Gaussian we are able to approximate the data reasonably well and to a, a precision that is consistent with pulse counted data.